Hey everybody and welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. Last time, we recruited some new people. They had, we got Morgan and Alistair. And of course, best of all, our little doggy Monty. Anyway, I think it's time we head off to our very, very um, next area and our quest. Which is of course, town. Of Lovering. Wake up, gentlemen. More travelers to attend to. <laughs> Led by an elf, of all things. Uh, they don't look much like their mothers. You know, uh, maybe we should just let these ones pass. Nonsense. Greetings, travelers! Highwaymen, preying on those fleeing the Darkspawn, I suppose. They are fools to get in our way. I say, teach them a lesson. Now, is that any way to greet someone? A simple ten silvers, and you're free to move on. You should listen to your friends. We are not refugees. What did I tell you? No wagons, and this one looks armed. The toll applies to everyone, Henrik. That's why it's a toll, and not, say, a refugee tax. Oh, right. Even if you're no refugee, you still got to pay. Your toll collectors, then? Indeed, for the upkeep of the Imperial Highway. It's a bit of a mess, isn't it? Charles Warden. You want to pay more? Well, we'll happily accept donations. I'm just saying, is that a reference for such um, pertinence? I could be mistaken, but that sounded threatening. Sounded like a threat to me. Interesting, because you seem a bit outnumbered. Do you really want to fight a Grey Warden? Did he say he's a Grey Warden? Them ones killed the king. Traitors to Ferelden, I hear. Turn Logain put quite a bounty on any who are found. But are them Grey Wardens good? I mean, really good. Good enough to kill a king? You have a point. Well, let's forget about the toll. We'll just leave you to your dark spawn fighting, king killing ways. Actually, I just switched my light on. Uh, silly me. But to the actual, to the actual point. Let's add bandit slang to the that list. Just when we had things settled. We are not alone. <laughs> really not alone. <laughs> All right, we surrender. We're, we're just trying to get by before the dark spawn get us all. You picked the wrong target. Yes, yes, of, of course. We should have been more careful. <laughs> I'm sorry. I put my camera a bit. Yeah, it's any better. How did everything get stolen? Yes, yes, of course. The coins we collected are right here. Uh, just over a hundred silvers. The rest is in the chest we brought. I swear. Well, you follow my lead, I can do some soldiers. What are you joking, right? I could never be a soldier. I want some questions answered. Well, what could I tell you? We aren't even from these parts. What? What exactly have you been doing? Well, watching for folks fleeing from the south. Chasing from the wilds and farm holders, mostly. There aren't soldiers here anymore, so we help ourselves. We try not to hurt anyone too much. 
What's going on, lads? It's packed full. The band took his men north with Tear and Logain, so there's no one looking out for it except a few Templars at the Chantry. Well, I was just trying to feed my family, you know? Have you heard about any survivors from the battle? A couple, maybe. A group of wounded Ash Warriors came by earlier. Got right out of their way. What news have you heard? Everyone's saying how the Grey Wardens betrayed the King during the Darkspawn fight. Got him and themselves killed. Turn Logain pulled out just in time. First thing he's doing as Regent is putting a bounty on Grey Wardens. That's a well then, let me go! No, you die. That's all you deserve. I'm not going down without a fight! I'll get on it. Alright, alright. Now it's better than later. Well, there it is. Lothering. Pretty as a painting. Ah, so you have finally decided to rejoin us, have you? Falling on your blade in grief seemed like too much trouble, I take it. Is my being upset so hard to understand? Have you never lost someone important to you? Just what would you do if your mother died? Before or after I stopped laughing. Right, very creepy. Forget I asked. What did you want to talk about, Alistair? His navel, I suspect. He certainly has been contemplating it for long enough. Oh, I get it. This is the part where we're shocked to discover how you've never had a friend your entire life. I can be friendly when I desire to. Alas, desiring to be more intelligent does not make it so. Anyway, I thought we should talk about where we intend to go first. <clears throat> you have some thoughts on that point, Alistair? This should be good. I think what Flemeth suggested is the best idea. These treaties, have you looked at them? Yes, I have. There are three main groups that we have treaties for. The Dalish Elves, the Dwarves of Orzammar, and the Circle of Magi. I also still think that Arleman is our best bet for help. We might even want to go to him first. Is there any way to contact the Grey Wardens? Short of leaving for Elden to seek them out, the only place to send word to would be Weisalpt Fortress. And that's thousands of miles away. Why are you even up to me? Well, I don't know where we should go. I'll do whatever you decide. Now that is unsurprising. Al Eamon is a good man, but I don't know for sure he's where we should go. I'm not going to fight about it. What if we should do, Morgan? Go after your enemy directly. Find this man Loghain and kill him. The rest of this business with the treaties can then be done in safety. Yes, he certainly wouldn't see that coming. And it's not like he has the advantage of an army and experience and... I was asked for my opinion and I gave it. If your wish is to come up with reasons why something cannot be done, we will stand here until the Darkspawn are upon us. Do we need to find these people? I can give you directions, if you like. Where do you find Arl Eamon? He'll be at the castle Redcliffe, in the far western part of Ferelden, next to the mountain passes. If he isn't there, someone will be able to tell us where he is. Where will we find the Dale Elves? If we head eastward, towards the Brazilian forest, we should hear word of one of the clans that wanders that area. Hopefully, they will still be there. Where will we find the dwarves? We would need to speak to their king in Orzammar. That means heading west into the Frostback Mountains, which won't be easy. Ah. 
Where do we find the Circle of Magi? That would be at their tower on Lake Kalenhard to the north. We'll be looking for the first enchanter, whoever that is. Where should where would Logan be exactly? If he isn't out in the field with his army, he's probably going to be at the palace in Denerim. We can go to Denerim, but somehow I suspect that they're not going to let us just walk around. Only a suspicion, of course. Are there any more directions? Then you have a plan. I'm ready to get going. Fair enough. Let's head into the village whenever you're ready. Yeah, let's explore this village. We got some supplies on the way. As if we needed more fighting. Stop looking here. at me, Mungo. Don't you see how scared I have everyone you is? Want. Why do you keep staring at me so, you flea-ridden beast? Can you not tell when you are not wanted? No. Oh. I enjoy company of creatures of the wild, not stench-ridden domesticated wolves. And he persists. Maddening. <laughs> oh, Monty, you just want to be your friend. I brought my family to Lothering because I thought it would be safe. I'm scared. When are we going home? I hear those bandits are back again. Why don't the Templars I don't like this them? place. I hear those bandits are back again. Why don't the Templars kill them? Please, we came here to get away from the fighting. We were lucky. We had the coin to pay the toll for those bandits. Many didn't. Oh, what am I doing? Ah. I brought my family to Lothring because I thought it would be safe. What happened to the king is so terrible. Is anywhere safe now? Need something? I don't generally talk to strange elves who wander in here. What if you got something against elves? I don't know you. Why shouldn't I have something against you? We've got enough strangers overrunning us. Nothing but trouble. I can write off for you, human, if that's what you want. Yeah, no. Beg pardon and all. I should mind my manners. I have some questions. Don't promise I'm going to answer them. What's going on here? What isn't? We've got chastened barbarians in every farmholder south of Kalenhard running from the Darkspawn. Not that they'll be safe here with the army gone. Who's in charge of the village? You could talk to the Elder, though she's got her hands full getting everyone on their way. For now, most folks go to Sir Bryant. He's head of the Chantry's Templars. You never have a warning, Lord? He's gone to war and taken all his soldiers, leaving us to fend for ourselves. There's not going to be much left when he returns. If he returns. Where those patterns are? Is outside the village? Were? You mean they're gone? Yes, I drove them off. Well, goody for you. Now there's no one to drive off the blighted refugees. Sir Brian's would be glad, though. He's been talking about offering a reward for anyone who'd run them out. I should go. Don't let me stop you. I want to go home. I brought my family to Lothering because I thought it would be safe. I brought my family to Lothering because I thought it would be safe. Where can we go? This is no better than what we left. I think a lot of people are just going to be repeating themselves, so I was fully trying to focus on named people. You there. If you're looking for safe shelter, I'll warn you, there's none to be found. Move on if you can. Lothering's lost. What do you mean? We've had refugees streaming from the south for the last two days. The Chantry and Tavern are full to bursting. There simply isn't enough food to go around, and we Templars can barely keep order. You'll be better off elsewhere, my friend. Are you keeping me from going in? Just warning you, things may not be as hospitable as you would expect. People are frightened. Is anyone in charge here? 
The ban has marched north with Tern Loghain, so Lothering's on its own. Most folks look to Elder Miriam. Otherwise, you could speak to Sir Bryant in the Chantry, I suppose. It's up to you. Greetings to you, good sir. If it isn't too much to ask, might you spare some bread or... or anything? Welcome to you. We thought it would be safer in Lothering, that the Terran would bring his soldiers here. But bandits attacked us and took everything. Our food, our clothes, my daughter's pet lamb. Nobody cares about a few elves like us. Surely you understand. I met this bandits, they're dead now. You killed them? That's wonderful news. Perhaps our belongings are still there. I can't thank you enough, friend. Even if we don't get everything back, it's... It's good to know others will be safe. Mother, where are you? I brought my family to Lothering be because I thought it would be... Safe. Back off. I have the right to charge what I wish. You profit from their misfortune. I should have the Templars give away everything in your carts. You wouldn't dare. Any of you step too close to my goods and I'll... It's so nice to see everyone working together in a crisis. Warms the heart. Oh, you there. You look able. Would you care to make a tiny profit helping a beleaguered businessman? Why would I want to help you? Didn't I mention profit? He is charging outlandish prices for things people desperately need. Their blood is filling his pockets. Tis only survival of the fittest. All of these Cretans would do the same in his shoes, given the chance. I have limited supplies. The people decide what those supplies are worth to them. You bought most of your wares from these very people last week. Now they flee for their lives, and you want to talk business? Look, stranger, I have a hundred silvers if you drive this rabble off, starting with that priest. I'm an honest merchant, nothing more. Can you beat off a sister? You want me to bid against him? We don't have that kind of coin. What do I give to help you? We have nothing to offer but our gratitude. Tell us yourselves, I'm not getting involved. Well, I won't stand for thievery, especially not at the demand of some shrewish priest. Then go, and may you get all you deserve. I hope the darkspawn choke on your cheap hides. Ah. I suppose it couldn't be helped. Maker, help us all. Done. Anything else? Shit, wrong button. Need to find somewhere to sell some of this stuff. Where are you from? And Eileen spoke unto the masses, My hearth is yours, my bread is yours, my life is yours. For all who walk in the sight of the Maker are one. Who are you exactly? You don't talk much, do you? Let all repeat the chant of light. 
Only the word dispels the darkness upon us. He can't answer you. He's Chanter Devons. What's a Chanter? One of them that can only say the chant of light. His board has letters of good deeds to be doing. My father fixed Widow Allison's roof ones, and the Chanter paid him, he did. A learned child is a blessing upon his parents and onto the Maker. It's like a vow of silence then? He can't talk normally? Unless it's the chant of light? No. And so Rajmael in the heathen temple recanted. Speak only the word, sing only the chant. Then the golden city is thine, spoke Andraste. Everything interesting on the board? Blessed are the peacekeepers, champions of the just. There you go. The legions of evil are on your doorstep. They will feast upon our hearts. There is nowhere to run. This evil will cover the world like a plague of locusts. Please, you're scaring the children. Better to slit their throats now than let them suffer at dark spawn hands. There! One of their minions is already amongst us. This man bears their evil stench. Can you not see the vile blackness that fills him? What do we throw accusations for? Please stop! Somebody shut his mouth! But isn't he right? The ban left us. We're going to die. This minion is but the first of those who will destroy us! Don't be a fool. Darkspawn can be defeated. No! I have seen them! You cannot run! You cannot fight! Poor man, what happened to you? My family. My clan. Those creatures butchered them all. Some of us fled here, but we cannot escape the dog spawn. Must have been horrible. How do you escape? No, I won't listen to the words <laughs> of a man tainted by dog spawn. I'm not evil. Please, won't you talk to me? I ran. Hearing my wife's screams as they dragged her off. Scaring these people won't get her back. You... You are right. I will go. He was right, wasn't he? There's no hope for us. There's always hope. Must... Muster your courage. You're right. We can't give up. But we can't fight. What are we supposed to do? We can't lie down and die either. We must go north to Denerim. Maybe with that blasted chasing gone, my headache will go as well. Hmm. Who are you there? If you seek refuge in the Chantry, there's simply no room left. You're closed? We turn none aside, but we, we simply don't have room for anyone to sleep. Priests are within if you seek to offer devotion to the Maker, however. May he protect us all. Who's in charge of um, the Chantry? The revered mother runs the Chantry itself, and Sir Bryant heads the Templars stationed here. You know there were bandits on the highway? Were? Did you drive them off? Well, Sir Bryant will appreciate that. Have you had any news? Not since Terran Loghain passed by with his army. It's a shame about the king. But with the Darkspawn coming, few can think of anything else. Bye bye. Make her watch over you. Oh, I keep getting the wrong button. Sports.
stragglers. No sign of the main hall. We are the only hope of protecting this village has, and I will not abandon them. That is all. May the Maker have mercy on us. Please, we came here to get away from the fighting. I hear those bandits are back again. Why don't the Templars kill them? I brought my family to Lothering because I thought it would be we safe. We were lucky. We had the coin to pay the toll to those bandits. Many didn't. Are you here to see the Reverend Mother too? The who? The head of this chantry. She's very busy, but I think she's free now. I came to ask for a blessing. With my family abandoning the farm to flee north, we'll need all the grace the Maker can offer. Well, good luck to you. I need to get underway. If I'm lucky, I'll make it back to the farm hold by nightfall. I thought there would be soldiers here, or at least a place to hide. I brought my family to Lothering because I thought it would be safe. Yes? Who might you be? I'm the Grey Warden Dowiam. I see. I am Sir Bryant, commander of the Lothering Templars. Tan Logain declared all Grey Wardens traitors responsible for the King's death. You know this, I hope. The Grey Wardens didn't know such thing! I don't believe the Grey Wardens would be as careless or malicious as the Tan claims. But either way, there it is. It is best you not linger, though. Just in case. Are you in charge here? The revered mother leads this flock. I merely command her Templars. Normally, our role is to protect the Chantry and seek out unsanctioned magic. For now, it is all we can do to protect the innocent. And if you found an unsanctioned... And if you found an uncensored mage? Let us pretend that I was such a mage. What would you do to me? Hmm? Oh, I have no time to even think about such things right now. My concern is protecting these people. I see nothing threatening them other than the Darkspawn. How do Templars fight against magic? We have more than swords at our disposal. We're taught to dispel unholy magics as well. If only our powers work to keep away the Darkspawn. Alas, it is not so. Where can I find a third mother? In her study, no doubt. Preparing what she will take when we eventually evacuate. Are you the only protection this Phyllis has? Our ban was summoned by Tern Logain, and he took his soldiers north with him. Lothering has been abandoned. Tell me about someone else. If the matter is important, certainly. You had any news recently? Other than the Darkspawn horde bearing down on us, none of it is good. Tern Logain is set to declare himself king, I hear. Disaster piled on disaster. King Caelan had no heirs? None that we know of. Tern Logain has no legitimate claim on the throne. He may be a hero, and his daughter may be queen, but he is a commoner, and the king's corpse is barely cold. If Arl Eamon was able to intervene, perhaps it would not have gone this far. I do not care who takes the throne. Mm -hmm. Only fools fight over who owns a cottage while it burns down around them. What's wrong with Arl Eamon? Arl Eamon has fallen ill, and his knights are on a quest for the sacred urn filled with Andraste's ashes, said to cure any malady. He must be very ill if they chase miracles as the only cure. One of the Arl's knights, Sir Donal, is here searching for fantasies while... Never mind. Ask him if you care about this foolishness. If the matter is important, certainly. Only if you are interested in the business of mages. I have heard word that the Templars who watch over the Circle of Magi's Tower so have I called for the right of annulment. Me. Hopefully I've heard wrong. What? Why? What's the right of annulment? If the right of annulment is invoked, the Tower and every living soul within will be destroyed. We need the Circle's help. We should go and find out what's happening. To have such a call when mages are needed to fight the Darkspawn, something terrible must have happened. I have nothing else to tell you. The only news I care about is the approaching horde. Let's go. Travel safely. 
and may the Maker watch over you. I'm not going to talk to you yet, sir, Brian. Greetings, Grey Warden. What can I do for you? Is there any help I can offer? I cannot openly help you, I fear, but... Here, take this key. It opens the large cabinet on the far wall. There is more there than we can carry when we evacuate, so take what you need. Right, uh, um, seems to be very dire in this village. They are. With the ban having taken his men north, the village is left to its fate. We will evacuate as many as we can before the horde reaches us. I will stay as long as I am needed. Now, unless there's something else you need. If the matter is important, certainly. I even charge you. The revered mother leads this. Okay. Normally, our role is to protect. Travel safe. Greetings, Grey Warden. What can I do for I you? I found this outside the village. Maker's breath. How many times must we drive them off? I won't bother you again. I killed them. All of them? By yourself? It's true. I saw it from my post. It was over so fast, we didn't even have time to get over there. Sad that it needed to come to that. But then they asked for it. Will you accept a small reward for your service? I keep, I keep an eye out for trouble for the right pay. I wish I could afford such help to be truthful. Take your reward at any rate. It is all I have to offer. If it interests you, there is a chanter's board outside full of quests that need doing. The chanters even offer pay for some of them. Now, unless there's something else you need. Let's go. Travel safely, and may the Maker watch over you. You, miss, what is your name? You seem quite odd to me. You would not be the first to think so. But avert your eyes. I will not have you staring over long. Let's get used to it. I'll be watching you. We want no trouble here. Fuck you then. I brought my family to Lothring because I thought it would be safe. At all? Who? I beg your pardon. I did not see you approach. Sir Donald? Is that you? Alistair? By the maker, how are you? I, I was certain you were dead. Not yet. No thanks to turn Loghain. If Arl Eamon were well, he'd set Loghain straight soon enough. So you're here looking for the urn of sacred ashes, then? I am indeed. On Druste's ashes are said to cure any illness. But I fear we are chasing a fable. With each day, my hope dims. Shouldn't you be fleeing the dark spawn? My mission takes priority. But I fear I shall be returning to Redcliffe with nothing to show for my efforts. I don't want to meet our argument, in fact. Why is that, if I may ask? We need help against Tern Loghain. I see. The Arl is a popular man, it's true. Tern Loghain, however, is a hero throughout Ferelden. Whatever the Tern has done or not done, the Arl remains ill or worse. That is my primary concern. Is there any point going to Redcliffe? He may be dead already. Or perhaps his luck has changed in the weeks I have been gone. We should see what's happening in Redcliffe ourselves. I believe that now more than ever. If nothing else, I am certain you would be welcomed at Castle Redcliffe. The Arlesa is there, and she could tell you more than I could. So, are you quest for Shaker Dust to you here? I expect you to take advantage of the Chantry's library, in fact. But my skills are better suited to battle than chasing down tails. Tell me more about the, the urn of ashes. Supposedly, the, the urn contains the ashes of the prophetess Andraste. Surely you know all this. Perhaps I could help you. Nothing I have found leads me to believe that this was anything more than a quest of desperation. I intend to return to Redcliffe soon and tell the Arlesa exactly that once Sir Henrik arrives. Who's Sir Henrik? My fellow knight and travelling companion. He is delayed, though. Oh, you found that Sir Henrik is dead. I have something of his. What? And you have his locket? And a note? Maker's mercy. Thank you for giving me these. I would never have known otherwise. I'm sorry about your friend. No, no, I doubt the bandits that killed him. Thank you. I wonder how many of us have met similar fates on this mad quest. I should go. With Henrik gone, I need to return to Redcliffe. Perhaps later I will seek out the scholar his note mentions. But I must go. 
Thank you again, good sir. You have been most helpful. Keep the wrong button, sorry guys. And when the Maker spoke, the chant of light scattered in the darkness. The word to spare no one fear and ignorance. Accurate likeness of those who cry out from the shadows. Maybe she was ugly. Maybe she has but seek redemption be delivered. How do we know? But those who have sinned. It's terrible. So many come to Lothering seeking refuge, only to find that we can offer little more than prayer. Does the Maker see our plight? Is he moved by this destruction? I, I apologize. The Maker's plan is too grand for me to fathom, especially at times like this. In charge here. The revered mother presides over the chantry, and Sir Bryant leads the few Templars guarding us. Why does she the feast chant exactly? The chant of light. Surely you know it. I've not heard it sound quite like that. Perhaps you haven't heard these verses before. The entire chant takes weeks to sing and is only done straight through at the Grand Cathedral in Val Royaux. Here we can only sing a few verses per week and finish anew each first day. Light. When the prophet Andraste was burned by the magisters, the Maker turned away from his creations. We gain his forgiveness by spreading Andraste's teachings. The Maker will return when the chant is sung from the four corners of the world. That sounds seem like an excuse to spread the chant for influence. Would you see someone's soul denied the Maker's light just for the misfortune of having been born outside the Chantry's influence? Everyone deserves redemption, my friend. That's okay. May the Maker watch over you. When the chant spreads across all four corners of the world, let it rise at last to the ears of the Maker. Done now. Oh, I'm on Are you okay. happy? To, oh, well, I'm coming back later, so I'll and please then shall the find Maker return to us. Well. And then shall the Maker return to the Black City in Heaven. Greetings, and, and welcome to the Chantry. Will you be making a donation to the Chantry, my friend? You look like you have salvaged more of value than most who make it here. Who are you? I am the revered mother of this Chantry. Traditionally, those who seek my blessing tithe first. What tithe to the Perhaps, um... Tithe to the Chantry, are you joking? A great number of people could be fed and clothed for a fraction of your finery. But you must do as your heart wills. What can I do for you then? My grey warden need your help. A grey warden? Here? Oh dear. You put me in a difficult position. You must know that Tern Logain declared the grey wardens to be outlaws. So I've heard, but it's Logain who betrayed the king. Tern Logain? That is as hard for me to believe as his condemnation of the wardens. There is a price on your head. Lay low, and I promise to keep your presence a secret. That is the best I can do. Now, if there is nothing else... Can you provide any help to the Grey Wardens at all? I cannot help you without risking the safety of this village enchantry. The best I can do is keep your presence a secret. I am sorry. Now, if there is nothing else... That's a go. May the Maker guard you, Grey Warden. Let all mankind be humble. Let all I'll get on it. The word dispels the darkness upon us. Chant of light scattered in the darkness. Word.
Have you seen my mother? You bent who's your mother? She's really tall and she has red hair. We live on a big farm hold, all of us. Some main men with swords came and mother told me to run to the village as fast as I could, so I did. She said she'd be right behind me, but I've been waiting and waiting and I can't see her. Do you know where your father was? He went with William to the neighbours yesterday, but he didn't come back. I don't think she's coming, Charlie. Why not? Why would she leave me here? The mean man killed her, she's dead. But, no, she can't be dead. I'll find her. You ate my entire bag of herbs, you foolish dog. Do not think I am unaware of where it went. It is your own fault for being so entirely gluttonous. Several of those herbs were poisonous. You should be pleased they did not kill you. Do not be ridiculous. I am certainly not going to give you more, even if I did have more to give. Oh, you have some nerve, creature. And your breath leaves much to be desired. Off you go. We shall see. I promise nothing. The blight has truly come. And the king is dead. We're all going to die. Hello, uh, stranger. I don't suppose you know anyone that can make traps. What do you need to make traps Old for? Old Valen said that Darkspawn may be coming soon. He's got traps on his farm. I figured I'd put a few on my lands. Valen wants to poison his traps. I just want normal traps. Valen has poison traps on his land? Ah, oh, he doesn't have any poison yet, thank the Maker. So his fields are just full of traps. He can be a bit eccentric. Why did you spice them? None to be had. Balin has all the traps in the village in his fields. So I can't make traps. I, I didn't mean to bother you. Sorry. Next level up, I'll see if I can get some tra make traps. So let's see. talk about your. If I try to make traps. I'd rather talk about your mother. Well, there's nothing to talk about. And besides, isn't your mother a scary witch who lives in the middle of a forest? Much more interesting. To you, perhaps. You would find the moss growing upon a stone interesting. You know what's more interesting than that? Apostates. Mages outside of the tower. That's illegal, you know. You did not read that in a book somewhere, did you? I hope the small letters did not train you over much. Oh, we could not talk about your mother. That works for me. You got a bed for the night. You taken care of. <laughs> Actually, I was thinking more I could help you. Don't need blades right now. We need beds, food. And an end to all these sad sots. I don't suppose you know anything of tonics, medicines, or herbs. I don't, my friend does. He may be able to do us a lot of good. All manner of travelers come through, many injured or sick. We do our best, but we're out of supplies. There's medicinal herbs in the woods to the north. If you make a few poultices, I'll scrape together some sort of payment. I'll write all you need to know in this note here. Whoops, so I caught the wrong button and... Yeah, this is teaching about fasting, so... We can make some... Elf roots, so we can go... And now we can go... Have any luck finding herbs in the woods? I didn't need them. Here you go. This will help many people. You're a good sort, you know. There you go. Yeah, and also that woman, she's a um, quest tutorial for traps. Some 
fellow in the tavern said... Well, look what we have here then. I think we've just been blessed. Uh-oh. Loghain's men. This can't be good. Didn't we spend all morning asking about an elf by this very description? And everyone said they hadn't seen one. It seems we were lied to. Gentlemen, surely there's no need for trouble. These are no doubt simply more poor souls seeking refuge. They're more than that. Now stay out of our way, sister. You protect these traitors, you'll get the same as them. What makes you think we're traitors? Tern Logan claims the Grey Wardens betrayed the king. Or haven't you heard? Enough talk. Take the Warden into custody. Kill the sister and anyone else that gets in your way. Right, let's make this quick. Something is coming. An everlasting party. Oh, this should be all right, good. You've won. We surrender. Good. They've learned their lesson, and we can all stop fighting now. The Grey Wardens didn't betray King Logan. Lo um, didn't betray King Kaelin. Logan did. I was there. The turn pulled us out of a trap. You really are blind. Please wait! They have surrendered. They were no match for you. Let them be. They're going to kill us. But they failed. And I do not wish death on anyone. Then they can take a message to Logan. What do you want to tell him? The Grey Wardens know what really happened. I'll tell him right away. Now, thank you. I apologize for interfering, but I couldn't just sit by and not help. So I see. Where does the sister learn to fight like that? I wasn't born in the Chantry, you know. Many of us had more colorful lives before we joined. Let me introduce myself. I am Liliana, one of the lay sisters of the Chantry here in Lothring. Oh, I was. I'm Darian, a pleasure. They said you were a Grey Warden. I'm surprised you're an elf. But elves must want the Blight defeated as much as humans, no? I know after what happened, you will need all the help you can get. That's why I'm coming along. Oh, I need help, that's true. That, and the Maker wants me to go with you. Can you elaborate? I... I know that sounds absolutely insane, but it's true. I had a dream. A vision. More crazy? I thought we were all full up. Look at the people here. They are lost in their despair. And this darkness, this chaos. Well, the Maker doesn't want this. What you do, what you are meant to do, is the Maker's work. Let me help. I'm for sure for the people. Oh, or not. I don't know. Very well. I will not turn away help when it's offered. Perhaps your skull was cracked worse than Mother thought. Thank you. I appreciate being given this chance. I will not let you down. I want to. Indeed. Oh, I think I should make traps. Okay, get a level up. Um, anyway, that's a bit, what we're we doing. So I've been playing other games and get my buttons confused. Anyway, let's get, uh, um, just more combat clothes. Um,
Yeah, well, like I remember correctly, she's more of an archer, so you want to give her archer gear instead of, um... Ow. So, my brain, my, my brain is front. Um... Never really got a gift. Oh no, I didn't pick it up, did I? Uh, um. You're gonna make more trouble. We've about all we can stand in Lothering now. Sorry about that, man. They had it coming, and they were trouble enough themselves. So, so long as you don't start more, I won't get excited. Right then, name's Denial. Sorry I can't chat much. As you see, we have a full house. You had any rumors? I hear that Tia Logain, the regent, is calling for new levies of troops. He wants to rebuild the army we lost at Astagard. Thing is, there's not a lot of spare men to be found. Out of Dragon's Peak, there's press gangs roaming around, grabbing any free man they can lay their hands on. Anything else I can get you? I suppose you've not got any, um, rooms. Look around. People are sleeping on the floors and in the attic. That's how many rooms I don't have. Who's been a foot exactly? When Tian Logan marched by, he left those fellas behind to look for Grey Wardens. I suppose that's you. Look at to yourself. I have no qualm with you, whatever the Tian says. My grandfather served. Your secret's safe with me. What can I get you then? You hear any rumors? I hear news from Dinnerham that Tian Logain has been declared the new regent. It makes sense, his daughter being the queen. Anything else I can get you? Can you Some folks aren't happy about Tian Logain being named regent. There are rumors he had something to do with the king's death. Isn't that the most ridiculous thing you ever heard? The Darkspawn killed him, sure enough. If Tian Logain couldn't save the king from that end, then nobody could. Anything else I can get you? There's knights from Redcliffe spread all over Ferelden on some kind of mission, but I hear that they're starting to become rare fine. Maybe they all went back to Redcliffe. More likely they got tired of searching for something that can't be found and abandoned their search. I wonder what Earl Eamon is going to do without any knights. Anything else I can get you? Any of them? I heard from some travelers that something bad might have happened in Redcliffe. Overrun by Darkspawn, maybe. There's no word from the village at all. A merchant friend of mine said he encountered someone fleeing the place and there was nothing waiting for him there but death. He wisely turned around and came right back. Anything else I can get you? Any of them? People are disappearing all over the country. Folks on the road say they are seeing wagons abandoned, belongings left in the middle of the road with no one to be seen anywhere. Remote farm holes are left empty. Horses left without riders, and no corpses to be found. The dark spawn are taking them. There's no other explanation. Anything else I can get you? No rumors. I hear tell they held a funeral in Denerum for King Kia. The Grand Cleric called for a full day of mourning, and there was a procession a mile long passing by the brazier. It's too bad they don't have a body to properly burn. What happened to him at the hands of those creatures? It's unthinkable. Anything else I can get you? I'll be going. Luck speed your way. Oh. <laughs> I heard what you did with the other merchant. Got what he deserved. <laughs> well, I still don't have food to sell. Nobody well paying working over me? Check the chanters board by the chantry. There's good jobs there. Oh, <clears throat> no. Don't suppose you know anything about uh, poison? Poison? I've done such I figured if I kept asking, I'd find someone. I'd pay good coin for some simple poison. Something to slow them beasties down or make them think twice. And you working to get ingredients? Well, there's herbs in the north wood. As for other stuff, look around town. Some refugees just left things behind to travel faster. I don't really know what you need, though. I, I might have some in stock, too. 
pretty sure what you've got. Let me um, sell stuff I definitely I'll need. Correctly, I'm going to need some flasks. Anybody want? No, I've only got five or ten, but I'll buy, I'll buy five. I need to get ten. And, um, oh, I can give. One glass of. You need something? Any luck with that poison? Or you're here to see my stock? I have what you asked for. Splendid! If those beasties come on my land, I hope it teaches them a lesson. Yeah, it's enough gold to cover any of your expenses and then some. Hey! <laughs> Room now. Please, I must continue playing, else I earn no coin tonight. It is done. Take the supplies from my car. Your grassland eyes are inept. A chase end would never stoop to petty theft. You marsh folk are all thieves and liars. Enough. People here are already desperate and frightened. They don't need you two coming to blows. But what about my food? I said enough. The carnage we left in the wilds was horrifying. Shock get busted. Bana kyun, maras chokra, anan nesam kyun. Oh, who are you? You aren't one of my captors. I have nothing to say that would amuse you, elf. Leave me in peace. Are you a prisoner? Oh, I won't. Oh, excuse me. What are you? A prisoner. I'm in a cage, am I not? I've been placed here by the Chantry. The revered mother said he slaughtered an entire family, even the children. It is as she says. I am Sten of the Beresad, the vanguard of the Kunari peoples. Can I? If you haven't heard of us, that is your own shortcoming. Though it matters little now, I will die soon enough. This is a proud and powerful creature, trapped as prey for the Darkspawn. 
If you cannot see a use for him, I suggest releasing him for Mercy's sake alone. Mercy? I wouldn't have expected that from you. I would also suggest that Alistair take his place in the cage. Yes, that's what I would have expected. I suggest you leave me to my fate. What did you end up here? I have been convicted of murder. Have the villagers not spoken of this? How long have you been there? Twenty days now. I shouldn't last much longer. Another week at most. Capturing must be difficult. There is no difficulty in capturing prey that surrenders. Who did you murder? The people of a farm hold. Eight humans, in addition to the children. Are you guilty? Are you asking if I feel guilt or if I am responsible for the deed? However I feel, whatever I've done, my life is forfeit now. If you feel guilty of my murder, then what? If you feel guilty about why do you do it? Either you have an enviable memory or a pitiable life to know nothing of regret. I, aren't you interested in atonement? Death will be my atonement. There's enough way you can redeem yourself. Perhaps. What does your wisdom say is equal to my crime? You can help me defend the land against the land against the blight. The blight? Are you a <laughs> great warden then? Ah, how are you doing? Why do you ask? My people have heard legends of the Grey Warden's strength and skill. Though I suppose not every legend is true. Would your mother let you free? Perhaps if you told her the Grey Wardens need my assistance. It seems as likely to bring my death as waiting here. Yeah. Farewell then. But I guess the Do early days. Do to starve? Or to be taken by the Darkspawn? No one deserves that. Not even a murderer. I yeah, would we'll love them to do, do like a, um, a master of this game. So let me get this. Maybe like straight. change some you uh, were uh, a graphics and change some of the you must designs have been a bit up. Before you became a Templar. No? But anyway, also sex. It's good to see you. I How are you, bud? I into the Grey Wardens before I took my final vows. Do you ever regret leaving the Tentry? No, never. Do you? Yes. You may not believe it, but I found peace there. The kind of peace I've never known. It used to get so quiet at the monastery that I would start screaming until one of the brothers came running. I, I would tell them that I was just checking. Oh, you never know, right? I... no. I never did anything like that. I enjoyed the quiet. Suit yourself. The look on their face was always priceless. I like how I put that outfit on Liliana. You look very nice. Indeed. Oh, Liliana. Ah. Yeah, I get you there. I'm feeling pretty sleep myself. <laughs> what? What? What was that face for? <laughs> uh, pulling your face at me. Talking about, but I keep getting the wrong button. Talking about Liliana and gifts. Oh, Liliana! For you! I... that's a... <laughs> a weird mother. Good day, Sister Liliana. I'm surprised to see you're still in Lothering. It is good to see you as well, Your Reverence. Is there something <laughs> I can do for you then? If I ever get to, if I, I'm, I'm tough to get the PC version, maybe we seems again in the future. This is like shit off my, um, my like fanfic character. I've been getting to this game really recently and I've been kind of wanting to, um, 
write about my fanfic warden. What do you like, another time? I might do some might just write some stuff about it, but I am thinking about setting up a Discord in the future. Which would be nice if you could you could help me with that sex. But anyway. That's, that's, that's not important. I want to talk about Sten, the canal you imprisoned. It might have been kinder to execute him, but I leave his fate to the maker. Why does he interest you? I want him free. I might have use for him. Then his next victims might count you and me as their murderers. I was thinking you might release him to my custody. And what do you say on this, Liliana? You know your friend better than I. These are unusual times, your reverence. With us, the Kunari might do some good, but in fact... Were things not so desperate? I will do. I trust you. Take these keys to his cage and make her watch over you. Thank you, your reverence. Your trust is not misplaced. I've really written down some of these decisions because unfortunately this is important to the keep. So I have to make mental notes of what decisions I've made in different episodes. No, but you know why I'm doing, I'm not doing the um, fanfic character for the stream and I'm doing this. I'm wondering, Morrigan, do you believe in the Maker? Certainly not. I've no primitive fear of the moon, such that I must place my faith in tales so that I may sleep at night. But this can't all be an accident. Spirits. Magic, all these wondrous things around us, both dark and light. You know these things exist. The fact of their existence does not presuppose an intelligent design by some absentee father figure. So it is all random then. A happy coincidence <laughs> that we are all here. Attempting to impose order over chaos is futile. Nature is, by its very nature, chaotic. I don't believe that. I believe we have a purpose. All of us. Anyway. Done. Finished. Now what so it is done. I will follow you into battle. In doing so, I shall find my atonement. Thank you, Stan. I'm glad to have you with us. May we proceed. I am eager to be elsewhere. Even though you are looking fine as Liliana, um, time to say goodbye. Of all the... Yes. I miss you, Liliana. But anyway. Right, 
perfect. Can I get you a ladder so you can get off my back? You're in a little over your head. Hooray! Anyway, come level up. I can get myself specialization. I can go for the assassin, the bard, the ranger, or the duelist. I'll tell you how to unlock them later earlier on. Um Liliana um will teach you to be a bard when if by um if you um get a friendship with bard level up. Same with as I said for somebody new. I'll explain how you get that one when you meet the character who teaches you to do this. And Ranger, um, you get from a book. I do like to be a Ranger because I do find that, um, having an animal companion helps a lot more with the, um, oh, what's it called? Ah, uh, um. Button. Red the doggy can get a special ability by um landmarking the tree, shall we say? Target practice, anyone? some armor for our Kunari friend to have. It is done. Target practice, anyone? Excellent! I'll get on it. Lock me and you can pay! Make her! Alright, alright. Can I get you a ladder so you can get off my back? Well, you still can! I'll get on it. Guys, they just stand there! Get them! And then switch now, shall we?
path of righteousness is full of hardship, but the Maker smiles upon its travelers. I bet you I could kill it in two blows. Now is better than later. Got it. Get on. Can I get you a ladder so you can get off my back? Now is better than later. I guess they couldn't bear to be around anymore. That's a stupid pun. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, pardon me, I'm so sorry, that was disgusting. Let him take notice and shine upon thee, for thou hast done his work this day. And the stars stood still, the winds did quiet, and all animals of earth and air held their breath. All was silent in prayer and thanks. Let each look after his, his neighbor, and he will be looked after in return. I think I missed an area I do a bit more exploring. I'm just annoyed I didn't I forgot to um put some into trap making. And that Liliana doesn't have it. I'm pretty sure none of my cats have trap making. Wrong thing. Nope. 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 Beasties. Beasties are coming. Can I get to the ladder so you can get off my back? No chance. No chance at all. I'm gonna die! Hey, they're all dead. How much I level up? Uh, 
I'm so sorry, I think it's necessary the trap making um, press line, but yeah, basically just teaching you about the main types of crafting in the game. But anyway, if the only thing we can do is head out of flavoring. We done heard what was said. You're a warden. I don't know if you killed King Kalen, and make her forgive me, I don't care. But that bounty on your head could feed a lot of hungry bellies. Attack! I'll get on it. All right, all right. Down you go! All right, let's go! Done now. Are you happy? Dark spawn. Kill them all. Come on! Mighty timely arrival there, my friend. I'm much obliged. You're welcome. Name's Bodon Fedek, merchant and entrepreneur. This here is my son, Sandal. Say hello, my boy. Hello. Road's been mighty dangerous these days. Mind if I ask what brings you out here? Perhaps we're going the same way. I doubt you want trouble with Grey Warden. Grey Wardens? Hmm. My, that does rather explain a lot. No offense, but I suspect there's more excitement on your path than my boy and I can handle. Allow me to bid you farewell and good fortune. Goodbye. Now then, let's get this mess cleaned up, shall we? Oh. I'm trying to remember who like that someone like that statue, but I'm trying to think who it is. Alistair? I could get used to this, you know. I think it's Alistair. Anyway. Let's find out where we can go next. Dream is her. Yep, it seemed so real. Well, it is real, sort of. You see, part of being a Grey Warden is being able to hear the Dark Spawn. That's what your dream was hearing them. The Archdemon, it talks to the Horde, and we feel it just as they do. That's why we know this is really a blight. Why didn't Duncan just tell everyone that? He did. He said he felt the Archdemon's presence. Everyone just assumed he was guessing. It takes a bit, but eventually you can block the dreams out. 
Some of the older Grey Wardens say they can understand the Archdemon a bit, but I sure can't. Anyhow, when I heard you thrashing around, I thought I should tell you. It was scary at first for me, too. Thanks, Alistair. I appreciate it. That's what I'm here for. To deliver unpleasant news and witty one-liners. Anyhow, you're up now, right? Let's pull up camp and get a move on. But will you looky here? Ah, Hello, guys! Good to see you, my timely rescuer. Bodon Fedic, at your service once again. I saw your camp and thought to myself, what safer place to rest for the evening than in the camp of a Grey Warden? I'm perfectly willing to offer you a fine discount for the inconvenience of our presence. How does that sound? Good? Yes? Have you been following us? I can see why you might be suspicious, being a Grey Warden and all. Were I in your shoes, I would feel the same way. Trust me when I say that my encountering you here was serendipity and nothing more. I travel a lot. So I'm bound to meet everyone on the road eventually. If you prefer, I'll take my boy and be on my way. But regretfully, you're the safest spot on this road, without a doubt. What are you selling? What are you selling exactly? Anything, everything, but all of the finest quality. No cheap trinkets here. And my boy Sandal happens to be a bit of a hand with enchantments. Oh yes. Sadly, it also makes us a target for bandits in the life. If there were spare hands to hire as guards, I would have done so long ago. You're free to say, just mind yourselves. Wonderful. Thank the gentleman, won't you, boy? Thank you, sir. We won't be a bother to you and your companions, I assure you. If you should need enchantments, simply talk to my boy. Otherwise, come speak with me. If there's anything I can do for you, please, please tell me. So what's your story exactly? Hmm. I suppose since you told me about you being a Grey Warden, it's only fitting for me to be as open. I am originally from Orzammar, the famed dwarven city that lies beneath the stately Frostback Mountains. I was a merchant there too, merchant caste. These things are in the blood, you know. You can't just leave them behind. I ran a fairly successful business. Rare artifacts, you know. Old things, grand things. The nobles loved them. Reminded them of the lost glory days, I suppose. Lost glory? Our kingdoms once spanned the length of Thados, from majestic Orzammar to Kalsharok to glittering Darmalin, far to the west. They say the gold and silver veins ran so thick through the stone of Darmalin that the entire city sparkled. The Darkspawn took it all, of course. One by one, the old tigers fell, and then all that was left was Orzammar. But we were talking about how I ended up here, weren't we? One day, a noble woman came to my store. She looked around for a bit, and then started shrieking in dismay. Apparently, she believed that a pair of braces I had for sale once belonged to her brother. He'd been lost in a cave-in, you see, while on an expedition to clear out the Darkspawn from one of the tunnels running close to the city. They were made specially for him. They're unique, she shrieked. He stole them from my poor brother's corpse. She had me arrested on the spot, of course. No balls. They're touchy like that. And did you steal them? Well, I didn't steal them. You see, I, I'd been paying these castless thugs to venture out into the deep roads for me. The lost tigers. Th they're full of things that people left behind. Sometimes you can find a treasure. Something worth a little gold. Is that stealing? To the nobles it is. They believe everything in the tigers belongs to the house it wants to dwell there, even if it's in ruins and they haven't seen it in generations. The noble woman, she wasn't too happy with the theft of her brother's braces. I don't know what they planned for me, and I didn't want to find out. Bribed the guard that was watching me and took off for the surface first opportunity I got. Never looked back. You're quite lucky to have done so well. I thank the stone every single day. Now, is there anything the boy or I can get you? 
You give me your son in the town. Ah, yes. I'm married to a fine woman back in Denerum, it's true. She'd give me a son if she could, but uh, that's not likely to ever be. Sandal here. I found him in the deep roads years ago. Abandoned, I think. And he was never quite right in the head. I took him in, and I brought him with me when I came here to the surface. He may not be my blood, true. But I think of him as one. We left Orzammar. That's right, boy. Maybe one day we'll see it again. It's not as if I don't benefit, mind you. Turns out the boy's a natural working with enchantments. He might have even been leery maddled. I never thought of that before, to be honest. Happens sometimes. He can work an enchantment into just about anything, however, given some time. Could probably open his own shop, if he knew how. Enchantment. <laughs> well, he does seem to enjoy it, at least. But these goods, where do these goods come from? Not the deep Look, we, we don't rob people, all right? We don't take things from people that need them. The things in the law's tides, what good did they do lying there? I brought them back to Orzammar, where people could look at them and remember. It's not all that different up here. There are places long abandoned by the humans everywhere. Even more now with the Darkspawn coming. What do you mean? People flee from the blight with good reason, but they forget things. Things with value and meaning. They leave them behind because they're frightened and desperate. And sometimes, oh, my yeah, boy I and I, like we reason. find our way to these places before the Horde descends, and we save these things. I take them away so the Darkspawn don't get them. Is that so bad? They destroy everything they touch. Better than having a dark spell cut all. That's what I tell myself too. Ah, these are dark times indeed. Dark times, my friend. Are there any rumors? It's not just dark spawn in the horde. You know that. There are people with them. Folks who are sick with the blight, and their minds are all twisted and mad. I heard tell of a man meeting his own brother on the field, yet when he called out to him, his brother didn't even recognize him and just attacked. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. Let me see your words, Brad. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected, and with your discount. You look, you can get some pretty good stuff. Ooh, Oathkeeper. Let me see all the stuff that I think would be worthless to me. I'll have to look through them later on. Oh. Yeah, these are the feast day um, gifts and pranks. Basically, um, some upset people and some really um, make them happy, but I'll show them off at another time. Yep, that's everything. Now let's go talk to Sandal. Hello. The boy's a bit simple, but he's rather good with enchantments. One of those tranquil fellas actually called him a, what was it now? A savant. I had no idea such a thing existed. What in turn is he doing? He can fold lyrium into almost any weapon or piece of armor. Though naturally some of the more extravagant materials will take more lyrium than others. It's a process that some of the master smiths back in Orzammar will perform. But my boy here is just as adept at it. Isn't that right, boy? Enchantment! And there you have it. What's I'm talking about? Enchantment! <laughs> Bless him! He's such a sweet boy! I love Sandal! Oh, I've got to show the dagger. You 
and your friends are formidable. You can sell some stuff I don't need. I'll talk to you last, but I'm gonna f first of all talk to um some party members get known better. Hello, Morgan. What do you wish of me? I said ask you about If you must. How do you become a shapeshifter? I was not born such. Tis a skill of Flemeth's, taught over many years in the wilds. The chastened have tales of we witches, saying that we assume the forms of creatures to watch them from hiding. When a child is alone and separate from his tribe, that is when we strike, dragging the young boy kicking and screaming to our lair to be devoured. A most amusing legend. You might have been doing this for a long time then? Changing her form, certainly. Devouring lost children, I cannot say. She has not done it in my experience, though in truth my lifespan is but a fraction of her own. Why do you ask? Is there something specific you wish to know? I've never heard that matter before. No? Tis not unheard of in the remote corners of the world. There are traditions of magic outside of the Circle of Magi, despite what those mages would have you believe. Some of these traditions are old, indeed, passed down as carefully guarded lore from one generation to the next. The zealots of the Chantry would uproot all such practitioners if they could. But as luck have it, some still exist. My mother is such a one. By, practitioner, uh, by practitioners, do you mean apostates, don't you? Not all apostates use the forbidden blood arts. Maleficarum do, but to condemn all who do not fall under the circle's thrall for the sake of what might be is a dangerous path to walk. There are those who look on the word apostate as meaning freedom. Can you change other human forms as well? The form of an animal is different from my own. One may study the creature, learn to move as it does, think as it does. In time, this allows one to become as it is. I gain nothing by studying another human. I already am the same as they are. I learn nothing. So the answer is no, my human form is the only one I possess. Do you spend a lot of time as an animal? There were nights when the wilds called to me, it is true. You look upon the world around you and you think you know it well. I have smelled it as a wolf, listened as a cat, prowled shadows that you never dreamed existed. But my life is as a human, I am under no illusions to the contrary. What do I must think of when you change? They do not shy away from me. To their senses, I believe I seem like any other of their species. As to what they think, I truly cannot say. Just as I am still human, no matter my form, they are still animals. Thus they cannot speak, even were I to ask. Can I become a shapeshifter? Anyone with sufficient will. But the act of transformation is a magical one. It is a spell and thus requires a mage's talents. If you had a notion to learn such a skill for yourself, sadly, you must remain disappointed. That's what I want to ask. Indeed. Have you an opinion on my abilities, then? Am I an unnatural abomination to be put to the torch? I think your abilities sound quite useful. Oh, you're simply full of surprises, little man, aren't you? But enough of such talk, let us proceed lest the dust gather on us. What do you wish of me? Well, I'll ask you something. If you must. Did you grow up in the Kakari Wilds? Why do you ask me such questions? I do not probe you for pointless information, do I? You can probe me any time. Beg pardon then, while I jump for joy. What is it you asked if I grew up in the wilds? A curious question. Where else would you picture me? For many years it was simply Flemeth and I. The wilds and its creatures were more real to me than Flemeth's tales of the world of man. 
In time, I grew curious. I left the wilds to explore what lay beyond, never for long. Brief forays into a civilized wilderness. <laughs> <laughs> and you remained unnoticed? For the most part. Flemeth taught me well. For all that I had been taught, however, the truth of the civilized lands proved to be overwhelming. I was unfamiliar with so much. So confident and bold was I, yet there was much that Flemeth could never have prepared me for. Very daring, very daring. That sounds just like you. <laughs> Equal parts daring and foolhardy, perhaps. Only once was I accused of being a witch of the wilds, and that by a chastened who happened to be travelling with a merchant caravan. He pointed and gasped and began shouting in his strange language, and most assumed he was casting some curse upon me. I acted the terrified girl, and naturally, he was arrested. That was quick thinking. Men are always willing to believe two things about a woman. One, that she is weak, and two, that she finds him attractive. I played the weakling and battered my eyelashes at the captain of the guard. <laughs> Child's play. The point being that I was able to move through human lands fairly easily. Whatever humans think a witch of the wild looks like, it is not I. Not that I did not have trouble. There are things about human society which have always puzzled me, such as the touching. Why all the touching for a simple greeting? I've no idea, I'm not human. Do not speak to me of trivialities. Your culture is not so entirely different. There were many nuances that Flemeth could never tell me of. When to look into another's eyes. How to eat at a table. How to bargain without offending. None of these things I knew. I still do not understand it all, truth be told. But then I gave up long ago any hope of doing so. When I returned to the wilds last, I swore to Flemeth that I had no intention of leaving again. Well, I'm glad about that way, at least. Yes? Let's ignore the entire Darkspawn threat and the presence of a simpleton as your only other Grey Warden ally, then. Not that I lack appreciation for the intent of your comment. Thank you. Well, let's get on with it before the ground opens up and swallows us, yes? Yes? So life in the world must have been very lonely. At times, perhaps. A world full of people and buildings and things was all very foreign to me. If I wished companionship, I ran with the wolves and flew with the birds. If I spoke, twas to the trees. That sounds wonderful. For a time, but one can only remain a child for so long. I recall the first time I crept beyond the edge of the wilds. I did so in animal form, remaining in the shadows and watching these strange townsfolk from afar. I happened we upon a noble going? woman by her carriage. Adorned in sparkling garments, the likes of which I had never before seen. I was dazzled. This, to me, seemed what true wealth and beauty must be. I snuck up behind her and stole a hand mirror from the carriage. It was encrusted in gold and crystalline gemstones, and I hugged it to my chest with delight as I sped back to the wilds. What happened then? Flemeth was furious with me. I was a child and had not yet come into my full power, and I had risked discovery for the sake of a pretty bauble. To teach me a lesson, Flemeth took the mirror and smashed it upon the ground. I was heartbroken. But you're just a child. And a foolish one. Flemeth was right to break me of my fascination. Beauty and love are fleeting and have no meaning. Survival has meaning. Power has meaning. Without those lessons, I would not be here today, as difficult as they might have been. They made you stronger, didn't they? They did indeed. 
To return to your original question, perhaps my time in the wilds was indeed lonely, but such was how it had to be. I find myself at times wondering what might have become of the girl with the beautiful golden mirror, but such fantasies have no place amidst reality. Yes? Well, let's ask you something. So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> have you ever been hunted by the Chantry? <laughs> you are very cute to ask so many questions. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you think so. And I am glad you are so glad. <laughs> My mother has been hunted from time to time, yes. By Templar fools like Alistair, which should tell you how successful they generally were. Flemeth made a bit of a game of it, in fact. The Templars would come again, and she would look at me and smile and say that the fun was to begin once more. Fun? You had fun? You found it fun? I found the game fun. I was too young to understand the truth behind what was happening. Flemeth would warn them once. It was a warning they inevitably failed to heed. And then the true game began. Often Flemeth would use me as bait. <laughs> a little girl to scream and run and lure the Templars deeper into the wilds and to their doom. Surely more would have followed. Sometimes. Eventually. Thankfully, the wilds is a vast place. Once they found us, Flemeth would simply move us elsewhere and we would be lost within the forest once again. I did not understand the danger we faced until I was much older. I had never heard of apostates or maleficarum. You think it was fun? I think that my mother made it fun so that a child did not learn to fear. And I think that it was necessary. There are no trials for apostates, no prisons, no mercy. There are only absolutes, so only survival matters. If the wilds have taught me anything, tis this. First, you must survive. Do you disagree? Probably why. <laughs> an enlightened view, or at least an agreeable one. Enough of this talk, let us return to the task at hand. Yes? I'll try something. So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> it's pretty much what she really what she seems to be. <laughs> well, that depends, does it not? What does she seem to be? A powerful Mulefakar? You mean, is she truly the Flemeth of legend and story? Tell me, how much do you know of the tale? The one that the Chastened still tell of my mother, to frighten them into obedience. I didn't even know such a thing. Ah, I see. That does explain much. I can relay what Flemeth once told me herself, and you can decide whether or not tis the truth, if you desire. That sounds interesting. As the tale is sung by the bards, there was a time when Flemeth was young and beautiful. A fair lass in a land of barbarian men. The desire of any... <sighs> this is Ted here, I see all cats up to stream today. Um, this how long ago is... Um, this how long ago is this? Many centuries before this land was even named Ferelden. The tales say that Flemeth fell in love with Osin the Bard and fled the castle of her husband, the dread Lord Conobar, and that he swore vengeance for her infidelity. In truth, my mother claims that t'was Osin who was her husband and Conobar the jealous Lord who looked on from afar. Lord Conobar approached young Osin and offered him wealth and power in exchange for his lovely wife. And Osen agreed. He sold his wife to another man? The life of a bard is a poor one, and love fades in the wake of hunger. It was Flemeth who suggested the arrangement. 
All would have been well had Lord Conobar kept his end of the bargain. But he was a foul man who bargained with coin he did not possess. Osen was led off to a field and slain, left for dead. Flemeth spoke to the spirits and learned of the deed, and swore revenge. Has she truly left Osen then? That was not the point. Conobar had no honor, so she would not have him. Flemeth begged the spirits to aid her, and twas they who slew Conobar. The demon the legend tells of came later. Oh, I get that. Lord That's a Conobar's terrible point. allies chased Flemeth, you see. Chased her to the wilds, and there she hid. There she found the demon, and he made her strong. The legends all speak of the great hero Cormac, he who defeated Flemeth and her great army when she invaded the lowlands centuries later. All lies. He might be able to call Cormac. The truth of the matter is that there was never an invasion. As Flemeth tells it, the Chastened never raised an army under her banner, and she never fought with any warrior named Cormac. Cormac led a brutal civil war against his own people, and later claimed it was to vanquish evil that had taken root amongst the lords. Thus, he was hailed a hero. Flemeth was only attached to the legend much later. Perhaps it was due to the great war with the Chastened that eventually came, but Mother claims not to know how it began. Do you tell us the legend of um, Flemeth? So, oh, the, the legend tells of Flemeth having many daughters. You ask if I have sisters? I have asked of this myself. The stories tell of many witches of the wilds, after all, not just the one. And these tales existed long before I did. Flemeth refuses to speak of other daughters, if they existed. So, should I believe I am her first? I doubt that too. Why would you refuse to speak of that? The Chastened tell of a falling out between Flemeth and her daughters. They say that one day she hunted them all through the wilds and ate their hearts. It may be true. I have never seen another witch or heard of one. Perhaps one day Flemeth will eat my heart as well. How is the Flemeth The demon Flemeth? within her has transformed her into something else. An abomination, perhaps, some would say. I know not. I only know my mother is clever, and she is part of the wilds as it is part of her. But she is no immortal. She bleeds. A blade in her heart would kill her like any other, were it lucky enough to find her. Aren't abomination usually insane horrors? How often is this usually? Always? If not always, then when is it not true? There are more things in this world and the next than you or I could ever hope to understand. What Flemeth became is a mystery. I suspect even to her. Do you believe her version? I do not believe everything that Flemeth claims. Often it seems her bitterness has colored her memories. But on the whole, yes, I believe this tale, if not all. It was an interesting story, thank you. Flemeth tells it with far more embellishment than I, but you are welcome. Dare I ask of your own mother? Few are abominations of legend, tis true, but I find myself curious nevertheless. My mother died when I was born. Ah, then you have my sympathies for what it is worth. Which is very little, I am certain. It matters not. Let us move on. Yes? Well, let's go something. So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> Tell me, are you really from Stora? I assume you were actually asking whether Flemeth herself gave birth to me. Truly, I do not know. I once asked Flemeth that very question and she merely laughed at me. It is not inconceivable that she could capture a chastened man, or perhaps change to a more attractive form to attract him willingly. I find it more difficult to imagine her with child. 
He wasn't at all. Not at all. He wasn't as always as, as, as isn't it now, was he? As a matter of fact, I remember her being younger once. She had black hair, much like my own, long and lustrous. But how could that be if she is centuries old? Has she become wizened only recently? Or are the tales of her legend only that and nothing more? I do know the tales of Flemeth having many daughters, even though I have never met another. And Flemeth has always treated me as her blood. Does, um, what have you ever real, um, does that mean you love her? <laughs> what an odd thing to say. Why must love enter into the equation? Flemeth taught me everything I needed to learn. How to survive, the meaning of power, the truth of men. If other mothers do not teach these things, then I believe them the lesser. I suppose that's true. You suppose it's true? Tis true. Take yourself. You do not honestly desire such things from me, do you? Tis better to be free of such cloying and cluttering delusions as love. Or for what? Then that. more the fool you, I think. I tire of this discussion. Let us move on, shall we? Yes? So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> yes? We are in camp, Starling so it is as good a time as any. We need to discuss us. Discuss away. No, I forget I put it up. I, I think if I try to kiss her, probably, um, be, will probably end up very badly, so I'm not going to risk it. I think I can Alistair now. Oh, no, Sven first. Why are we stopping? We're working together. I think I should get to know you. There are dark spawn to be fought. Is this delay needful? Are you what? You were in case for weeks. You are concerned. No need. I am fit enough to fight. I've seen the canal before. Tell me about your people. No. No, why not? People are not simple. They cannot be summarized for easy reference in the manner of the elves are a lithe, pointy eared people who excel at poverty. You said you were in the army? I am. What made you decide to be a soul? Become a soul? Decide. I am a Sten of the Beresad. I did not choose to be who I am any more than you did. Why would Kunari send a soldier here? The Antam are the eyes, hands, and mouth of the Kunari. We are how my people know the world. Doesn't that make your view things a little skewed? Compared to what? You only know about people you conquer? What does anyone truly know of the world? The world changes. We change. The Antam observe what we can, just as you do. There is no point to this. We are keeping the Darkspawn waiting. What's your what hurry? a strange language you speak. You say hurry, where I would say duty. Don't you do your hand with blight, though? No, it is yours, and you are chatting with me instead. As you wish. Yes. What are you doing in the caves? Sitting, as you observed. Does it be so little? No, it's a choice, not a necessity. Did you get my question? I did. Parshera. Was there anything else? Why is it because what you mentioned? Speak then. That's the then I suggest we move on. I have a question for I you. I am hardly surprised. Why did you come to Ferelden? To answer a question. Oh, what was the question? The Arishok asked, what is the blight? Oh, what hello, Queen. How are you doing? Are now here. What's an Arishok? The one who commands the Antam, the body of the Kunari. 
chose your king? Konari have no kings. What do you have done? Little patience for endless questions. Why did Konari care about the bloke? Why do you? McBay Warden. Exactly. Dogs. You don't ask, nor do I. The Arashok sends me and I go. Fair enough. Nice for you, you did. You've answered this question? A portion of it. What's the answer? Were you not at Ostagar when the army was overwhelmed? <laughs> that is your answer. Oh, yeah, thank you for that. Uh. <sighs> thank you very much. Why do you cry, Captain Blake? Why do you? Oh, because I'm a great horn to my girl. Exactly. You don't ask, nor do I. The Arashok sends me and I go. Do you have to report back? Yes. To when are you going to do that? Never. I cannot go home. Thank you, stay with us. Thank you. Can we move on? We keep the dark spawn waiting. Thank you very much. It's nice to see you. Hopefully you can stay for a bit longer next time. Bye. Speak then. Then I suggest we move on. I am hardly surprised. Very well. As you wish. Have a good more time to talk later on. Liliana. Yes. I like to talk. Well. Here I am. This vision of yours. I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I... I fell. And the darkness drew me in. I suppose I did. That Hello, was what kid. the darkness was, no? When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day, the rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw. <laughs> But there it was, no. a single beautiful rose. It was as though the maker stretched him, out his hand to my lap. Even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. Have faith. And this made do you want to help me? In my dream I fell, or, or maybe I jumped. I'd do anything to stop the blight. I know that we can do it. There are so many good things in the Maker's world. How can I sit by while the Blight devours everything? But I couldn't sit by either. That is why you are a Grey Warden. Come, there's a Blight to stop. Yes? Let's talk. Well, here I am. What was life like in the Tatty Cloister? Quiet. It was a life suited for contemplation. In the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace. And in that stillness, I could hear the Maker. But it was not perfect. Some of my Chantry fellows were condescending. That is the nature of religious folk, I suppose. Condescending house... How, uh, when I house talked out. about my beliefs, that the Maker reveals himself in the beauty of his world, they treated me with disdain. They want to believe that he's gone, so that when he turns his gaze on them, it means they are special, chosen. He cannot possibly have love for all, the sick and the weary, the beggars and the fools. What do you say to them? What can I say to them? What they believe is what the Chantry says, and the Chantry is infallible, yes? Maybe I am wrong. But it is the Maker's place to decide if I am worthy, not men, not the Chantry. But there is work to be done, and I have talked enough for now. 
Yes. Oh. Well, here I am. What's all are you doing in a lo in local town? What is meant by someone like me? But don't you just fight in the cloister, do they? Did you think I was always a cloistered sister? The Chantry provides succor and safe harbour to all who no. seek it. No, no, behave. Confirmed. What did you do before that? I was a travelling minstrel in Orlé. Tales and songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. Yes. I to talk. Well, here I am. You are a champion from Mistral? Do you have a tale to say? Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. Who about the Darkspawn? Chantry Law says it is man's pride that created the Darkspawn. In ages past, the mages of the Tevinder Imperium ruled much of the world we know. In their pride, they thought their magics invincible and imagined that they were greater than the Maker himself. So thinking, they invaded his golden city, planning to take it for themselves and depose their own creator. But they were impure and full of sin. And it is with the sin that they tainted the golden city, corrupting it forever. The Maker cursed them and cast them from his sight. Wherever they went, they spread the taint of their sin. Any land that was touched by the taint became blighted and would suffer no life. Instead, the darkspawn arose to torment us and remind us of our hubris. Do you any stories from Orle? Of course. Orlesians enjoy telling stories. I shall tell you my favorite tale of Aveline, the Knight of Orle. Go ahead. A long time ago, a girl child was born to a farmer. He had hoped for a son, not a daughter, and so he told his wife to abandon the child in the woods. Before the cold could claim her, the baby was found by a tribe of Dalish elves who took pity on the poor mewling thing and raised her as their own. Avelyn, for that is what they called her, grew strong and quick and clever under the guidance of the elves. She learned to wield a sword as well as any man, could kill a deer with an arrow at hundred paces, and was as graceful on the back of a horse as she was on foot. Please continue. Aveline's Dalish guardians saw that she could easily best any Olesian chivalry in battle, and wanted to show the cruel humans the child they had left to die. They bestowed upon her a fine horse and armor, and sent her to prove herself to her people in the Grand Tourney. Now in those days, no woman was allowed to take up arms, let alone compete in the Grand Tourney, but Aveline kept her helmet on and was not discovered. Aveline won many events and gained the approval of the adoring crowd. Eventually, she came face to face with the knight Kaleva in the Grand Melee. Aveline had already bested him in the joust, and Kaleva was determined not to lose a second time. Out of desperation to regain his honor, Kaleva tripped Aveline and tossed her to the ground, ripping off her helmet as he did so. Silence fell upon the arena as Aveline was revealed. Kaleva declared the previous competitions invalid. A woman had taken part, and this was not allowed. But the crowd cheered for Aveline. Kaleva was furious, for he had lost to a woman and was now being shamed. Blinded by his rage, he forced Aveline to her knees. Know your place, woman, cried he, and slit her throat. That's terrible. The son of the king, Prince Freyan, was present. He recognized Aveline's skill and bravery and began to see the injustice done to the women in his land. When he was made king, he rewrote the laws of Ole so that women could also become chevalier. He honored Aveline and knighted her after her death. And to this day, any female who is knighted reveres Aveline the Brave, for she is the patron of all women chevalier. 
Do you know any Froden legends? I know one. Told to me by my mother a long time ago. It always chilled me to the bone. Maybe you have heard of Flemeth? Flemeth? Morgan knows what's called Flemeth. Uh, are you sure? Was she the Flemeth of legend? Flemeth, the devour of men. Flemeth, mother of witches. Flemeth, demon touched, who dwells in the mists. They probably just have the same name. I suppose that's possible. But why would one adopt the name of a feared abomination? Ferelden mothers scare their daughters with talk of Flemeth. They say that if you're bad, Flemeth will spirit you away and bind you to her forever. They also say that Flemeth mourns her lost beauty and will steal yours through your looking glass if she catches you. Tell me the whole story. Flemeth's beauty was known throughout the land. She had hair like unto a moonless night, skin as pale as winter's first snow, and eyes as beautiful and perilous as the sea. When she came of age, she came to the attention of the Lord of Hyeva, Conobar, and he took her for his wife. Conobar soon learned that his young bride had the gift of magic. He kept this a secret, for he feared that she would be taken from him. Flemeth stayed with Conobar for some years, and with his blessing, she practiced her art. And then one day, a young poet named Osen came to the castle. Flemeth was captivated by Osen's voice, and he by her beauty, and they fell in love. Ooh, I'm so sorry. Then what happened? Flemeth longed to be with her true love, and she and Osen fled from Conobar's lands, seeking refuge in the Kokari wilds with the Chasin tribes. They lived there happily for many a year, till the day Flemeth received news that Conobar was dying and longed to see her face one last time. Flemeth's heart swelled with pity for the man who once was her husband and begged Osen to return to Conobar's side with her. But when Flemeth and Osen entered Hyeva, they were captured by Conobar's men and Osen was slain in front of Flemeth's eyes. Flemeth was imprisoned in the highest tower of the castle, there to await Conobar's judgment on her. Distraught at the loss of her love, Flemeth plotted revenge against her husband. She summoned a fey demon, intending for it to wreak vengeance on Conobar. But a spell went awry. The demon possessed Flemeth. Turning her into an abomination, the halls of the castle run red with blood as Flemeth slaughtered Conobar and all his men. The last of Flemeth's humanity <laughs> melted away, and at dawn, she stole back to the wilds to plot and scheme for a hundred years. They say she took to her side many chastened men, and with their help, begat her daughter witches, who even now prowl the dark places of the Kokari wilds. There's another one I wanted to hear. Which one? Do you know you think about the Dalus? I have heard a little about how the elves gained their freedom from the Tevinter Imperium. When Andraste began her exalted march against the Imperium, the elves joined her cause to fight their masters. The great elven leader, Shatan, born in captivity, rose up to lead his people. He foresaw a future where the elves were free. Shatan was killed when Andraste was betrayed, but the elves continued to fight, eventually breaking free of the Imperium. The elves claimed the dales in the south and settled there in the land of their own. It didn't last? The elves lived in the dales for centuries. They resurrected the worship of the elven gods and would allow the building of no chantry. This angered the chantry and the hostility between the two factions finally broke out in open war. The Chantry says the Elves struck first, but I do not know whether to believe it. The Chantry declared a wholly exalted march against the Elves, named for Andraste's similar march against the Winter. During the exalted march of the Dales, the Elven cities were sacked, and the Elven state completely dissolved. Some of the Elves bitterly accepted their fates, and surrendered to human rule, living in the human cities as second-class citizens. But others, still fiercely proud of their heritage, 
refused to bow to the humans, and instead became homeless wanderers. They were the elves of the Dales, the Dalish. What do you know about Andraste? Andraste was the maker's chosen. The maker had long since abandoned the world when the sound of her singing turned his ear. Beauty, grace and wisdom enraptured him and he offered to take her from this flawed world to become his divine bride. But Andraste had an earthly husband and would not forsake him. Instead, she beseeched the maker to return to his people once more. So earnest was her plea that the maker was moved and promised that he would create a paradise on earth if all abandoned their false gods and turned once more to him. And this is why Andraste began her exalted march on the idolaters of the Tevinter Imperium. The Maker granted her his powers with which to smite her enemies. Andraste brought the Imperium to its knees, and her victories converted many to the worship of the Maker. How did Andraste die? Alas, it was the frailties of men that betrayed and killed Andraste. Her earthly husband, Maferath, a chieftain of the Alamari tribes himself, grew jealous as his wife's popularity and influence overshadowed his own. She was also revered as the Maker's betrothed, and Maferath began to see their own bond waning in significance as Andraste became ever more devoted to the Maker. Out of envy and spite, Maferath made a pact with the Archon Hesarian of Tevinta, allowing his beloved Andraste to be ambushed and captured. Andraste was burned at the stake in Minrathos, the capital of Tevinta. But Tevinta's the enchanter, doesn't it? The Tevinta Chantry claims that in Andraste's last moments, Hesarian's heart softened and he heard the voice of the Maker telling him to end her suffering. He plunged his sword into her heart, and as her blood washed over his hands, he became one of the faithful. Dissenters said that the Archon only converted because he could not stem the tide of Andraste's cult, and was forced to do so to stay in power. We will never know for sure. Let's move on. Yes? Well, here I am. Yeah, I took of Joseph's adoption to her. What are you barking about, mister? Oh, why you little... What, what? Your furry friend here took offence at me getting near his food. He snapped at me, look. It was just a warning. You could have taken your hand off. Well, don't you think I don't know it? Sometimes I forget that he's a war dog. That'll teach me. I once heard a really old legend about how the hound warriors in the days of the old tribes would feed their Mabari the flesh of the vanquished. Well, that's what I heard anyway. It would sometimes be human flesh. Oh, like you can tell the difference. For all you know, maybe you've already been fed something. Someone. I wonder if we'd another human being. It's not cannibalism if he's eating it, you know. <laughs> oh, look at what your fool dog placed in my pack. A putrid, half-eaten hair is not something a woman wants to find in her unmentionables. You ruined him? Does it mean you have to, you have to, you have to go about? Maybe, but that is not the point. The dirty mongrel can have this back. There. And tell him not to do it again. You heard the lady. I don't want it, you worthless fur bag. Aww, poor boy. I think he hurt his feelings. Oh. He's just trying to be manipulative, I can tell. I do it too. You are a 
true warrior and worthy of respect. <laughs> Are you trying to find a way through the earth, are we? It's gonna take some time, you know. Well, good luck with that then. We have Monty be an example of the feast day gifts, but we'll talk to Alistair first. What do you need? Do you want to talk about Duncan? You don't have to do that. I know you didn't know him as long as I did. I thought you might want to talk. I... I should have handled it better. Duncan warned me right from the beginning that this could happen. Any of us could die in battle. I shouldn't have lost it, not when so much is riding on us, not with the blight and... and everything. I'm sorry. There's no need to apologize. I'd like to have a proper funeral for him. Maybe once this is all done, if we're still alive. I don't think he had any family to speak of. Why ever Grey Wardens? I don't know. I have no idea what the Grey Wardens do for them when they fall in battle. Have you had someone close to you die? Not that I mean to pry, I'm just... I saw plenty different the alien. Yes, yeah. I, I suppose you must have. I, I can't even imagine, really. Thank you. Really, I mean it. It was good to talk about it, at least a little. He was a friend of mine too. That's good to hear. It's nice to know I'm not the only one who remembers him well. What do you need? I'll ask you something. Ask away. What can a Templar do exactly? Essentially, they're trained to fight. The Chantry would tell you that the Templars exist simply to defend. But don't let them fool you. They're an army. The other main purpose for a Templar is, of course, to hunt mages. To that end, we train in talents that drain mana and disrupt spells. Couldn't... have you had many mages? No, I never actually became a full Templar. Duncan recruited me before I took my vows. I was only present during one harrowing. The ritual that they test the mages with. It's not unlike our joining, really. And just as deadly. The girl they tested, she had a demon put inside her to see if she could resist. And she couldn't. We had to end it quickly. I have to say I didn't have much interest in becoming a Templar after that. Couldn't have us learn these talents? Pardon me. Perhaps. But there usually isn't much of an opportunity. The Chantry keeps a close rein on its Templars. We are given Lyrium to help develop our magical talents, you see. Which means we become addicted. And since the Chantry controls the Lyrium trade with the Dwarves... Well, I'm sure you can put two and two together. So you're addicted to this Lyrium? Thankfully, no. You only start receiving Lyrium once you've taken your vows. You don't need Lyrium in order to learn the Templar talents. Lyrium just makes Templar's talents more effective. Or so I was told. Maybe it doesn't even do that. The Chantry usually doesn't let their Templars get away either, so they can spread their secrets. I'm a bit of an exception. Lucky me. What do you need? I'll talk to him. Ask away. You should be Templar? I suppose I could. But I really would rather not. When the Grand Cleric let Duncan recruit me, she made me swear never to reveal Templar secrets outside of the Chantry. I'd rather not go back on my word. Very well, I'll respect your, I'll respect your word. Ask me later, perhaps. Maybe I'll change my mind. This is not something small you're asking, after all. What do you need? 
Ask away. Him. You said this oh, raised oh, Did you? I say that? I meant that dogs raised me. Giant slobbering dogs from the Anderfells. A whole pack of them, in fact. I thought you were raised by the Chantry. Oh, there you go, listening to me again. You'd think you'd have gotten past that already. I ended up in the Chantry, sure, but I didn't start there. Let's see, how do I explain this? I'm a bastard. And before you make any smart comments, I mean the fatherless kind. My mother was a serving girl in Redcliffe Castle who died when I was very young. Our Lehman wasn't my father, but he took me in anyhow and put a roof over my head. He was good to me, and he didn't have to be. I respect the man, and I don't blame him anymore for sending me off to the Chantry once I was old enough. If it wasn't your father, so who is? I know who I was told was my father. He died even before my mother did, anyhow. It isn't important. Our Lehman eventually married a young woman from Orlais, which caused all sorts of problems between him and the king because it was so soon after the war. But he loved her. Anyhow, the new Arlesa resented the rumors which pegged me as his bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Arl didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age 10. Just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. You're really lucky in the most orphans. I suppose you're right. I wasn't raised as the Arl's son, though, if you're picturing that. I slept in hay, out in the stables, not on silk sheets. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall and it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. Really young. And raised by dogs. Or I may as well have been, the way I acted. <laughs> yeah, but maybe all young bastards act like that. I don't know. All I know is that the Arl is a good man and well loved by the people. He also was King Kaelin's uncle. So he has a personal motivation to see Logain pay for what he did. Anyway, that's really all there is to the story. Something on your mind? Of course. Have you ever in Sancho? Have you ever? Never, never what? Had a good pair of shoes? You know, what I'm I mean. not sure I do. Have I never seen a basilisk? Ate jellied ham? Have I never licked a lamppost in winter? Now you're making fun of me. Make fun of my comrade in arms? Perish the thought. Well, you tell me. Have you ever licked a lamppost in winter? That's not what I meant, you know. Oh, so that's what we're talking about. <laughs> well, if you really want to know, you tell me first. Honestly, no, I haven't. I myself have also never done it. That. Not that I haven't thought about it, of course. But, you know. You never had opportunity. Well, living in the Chantry is it's not exactly a life for rambunctious boys. They, they raised me to be a gentleman. That's not so bad, is it? I've uh, no urge to rush into anything. We, we may not even survive what is to come, after all. Enough. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Let's go. Something on your mind? Of course. Why would you remain a Templar if you hate the Chantry? Have you seen the uniform? It's not only stylish, but well made. I'm a sucker for good tailoring. I thought um, Templars will have your plate mostly. That's just in public. In private, we have these yellow and purple tunics, right? Much more comfortable, and you don't break the beds when you jump on them during a pillow fight. 
And what's the real reason? You don't really want to know about my being a Templar, do you? It's really quite boring. I do really want to know, yes. Poke, poke, poke. Tell me everything about your life, Alistair. All right, if you insist. It's not like we have anything better to do, right? The truth of the matter is that I did hate going to the monastery. The initiates from poor families thought I put on airs, while the noble ones called me a bastard and ignored me. I felt like Al Eamon had cast me off unwanted, and I was determined to be bitter. But I took some solace in the training itself, I guess. I was actually quite good at it. What did you enjoy about the training? The education, mostly, but also the discipline. You need to have a disciplined mind in order to use the abilities we have. It was difficult, but rewarding. I never really felt at home anywhere, though, until I joined the Grey Wardens. And Duncan felt my Templar abilities might be useful for when we encountered Darkspawn magic, so I kept it up. What about you? Do you have anywhere you consider home? The alien, oh, the alien is in Denver. My family's there. You must miss them a great deal. Duncan and the Grey Wardens are the closest I ever got to that kind of family. We won't always be traveling like this, you know. Once the war is over, once the blight is... Well, a time will come when we'll have to think about having a real home again. Though that seems like a far ways off. And I suppose the Grey Wardens are gone for good, either way. They can rebuild. I suppose you're right. We can create new Grey Wardens, but we'll never get back those we lost. I wonder if it would ever feel the same. Anyhow, now I've sidetracked us. We'd better get back to what we're supposed to be doing right now. Something on your mind? Of course. What is about you after joining? You mean other than becoming a Grey Warden? You've been a longer than, warden longer than I have. Hmm. You know, I asked Duncan this too, and all I got was, you'll see. He wouldn't tell you? Well, it's not that Duncan wants to keep it a secret. It's just that the Grey Wardens don't discuss it much. I gather it's not a pleasant topic. The first change I noticed was an increase in appetite. I used to get up in the middle of the night and raid the castle larder. I thought I was starving. I'd slurp down every dinner like it was my last, and <laughs> my face all covered in gravy. When I'd look up, the other Grey Wardens would stare, then laugh themselves to tears. I never felt anything like that. Really? I saw you eating dinner the other day. Savage. Oh, yes. Ah, yes, the classy camaraderie of two men traveling out in the open. I take it you were like this before the joining, then. Oh, and then there were the nightmares. Duncan said it was part of how we sense the darkspawn. We tap into their, well, I don't know what you call it, their group mind. And when we sleep, it's even worse. You learn to block it out after a while, but at first it's hard. It's supposed to be worse for those who join during a blight. How is it for you? Not much, yes, I know what you mean. Some people never have much trouble, but that's rare. Mm. Others have trouble Pardon sleeping me. Their I'm so life. sorry. They're just more sensitive. Well. Everyone ends up with the same Ooh, though. Once you reach a certain age, the real nightmares come. That's how a Grey Warden knows his time has come. Oh, that's right. We never had time to tell you that part, did we? Well, in addition to all the other wonderful things about being a Grey Warden, you don't need to worry about dying from old age. You've got 30 years to live. Give or take. The taint. It's a death sentence. Ultimately, your body won't be able to take it. When the time comes, most Grey Wardens go to Orzammar and die in battle rather than waiting. It's tradition. Oh, You'll always find Darkspawn down where the dwarves are. 
The oldest Grey Wardens head to the Deep Roads for one last glorious battle. Not that there's a shortage of Darkspawn during a blight, but that's the tradition. The Dwarves respect us for it. And you wondered why we kept the joining a secret from the new recruits. Well, there you have it. It's a half after prayer. I never wondered about that. I understand. You know, Duncan, he started having the nightmares again. He told me that in private. He said it wouldn't be long before he'd go to Orzammar himself. I guess he got what he wanted. I just wish it had been something worthy of him. Do we remember Alistair as for the others? I know. Ending the blight should make this all worthwhile, right? Something on your mind? Of course. Of course. So how do you become a great warden? Same way you did. You drink some blood, you choke on it, and pass out. You haven't forgotten already, have you? Ha ha, very I funny. do my best. <laughs> what can I say? Let's see. I was in the Chantry before. I trained for many years to become a Templar, in fact. That's where I learned most of my skills. You mentioned that before. It's really for the best. I'm not exactly the Chantry type, if you haven't noticed. I don't think I would have made a very good Templar. The Grand Cleric didn't want to let me go. Duncan was forced to conscript me, actually, and was she ever furious when he did? I thought she was going to have us both arrested. I was lucky. Why did the Grand Cleric want to keep you? I wondered that myself. It's not as if she valued me highly. I think she just didn't want to give anything to the Grey Wardens, is all. The Chantry didn't lose much. And I think I can do more fighting the Blight anyhow, rather than sitting in a temple somewhere. I'll always be thankful to Duncan for recruiting me. If it hadn't been for him, you know, I would never... I wouldn't have. He was a good man. He was. A good man who didn't deserve his fate. That much, I'm sure of. Come on, let's go. I think I'm done talking. Something on your mind? Of course. Where are wardens? Such as they are. Where's the nearest Grey Warden from here? That's a good question. There's plenty in Orlay, but who knows where they might be found. And the nearest Orlesian city is weeks away. If we go north and cross the sea, there's bound to be some in the free marches. Again, however, I just don't know where. I don't know anything about Grey Wardens in other lands. Is there a headquarters somewhere? Here in Ferelden, there's our compound in Denerim at the palace, but that's it. Loghain will have control over that and be watching it, no doubt. Beyond that, the only place I know of is Weishaupt Fortress. That's the headquarters of all Grey Wardens in the Anderfels, a thousand miles from here. But I've no idea how to even contact them. So unless we try to get back to the compound in Denerim, I suppose the answer is no. There's nowhere for us to go. What happens now is there's a tour. I imagine that eventually the Grey Wardens outside of Ferelden will wonder what's happened. Why there's no contact from Duncan or someone. They'll send someone eventually. Though who knows what Loghain's people in Denerim will tell them. Maybe they won't send anyone. We could try to contact them. But that would mean leaving Ferelden. And even if we did, they couldn't come back with us in time to stop the Blight. So that means whatever happens, it's up to us. We need to... We need to start rebuilding the order. I mean... Eventually, we would have to use the joining to make more Grey Wardens, right? But I don't know how to do the joining, or what's involved. I know it involves Lyrium and some other magic, and that it's really difficult to prepare, but that's it. Unless we can find out more about the joining, I guess we'd better get used to the idea that there might only be two of us for now. Until more come from elsewhere. What have we just left? Just left? You mean, just left for Elden? I don't know. 
If there's an arch demon, however, we're supposed to be the only ones who can <laughs> beat it. <laughs> and that means the blight would grow unchecked. Eventually, other Grey Wardens in Orlay and other lands would hear about it and they would come to fight it, but they wouldn't come in time to save Ferelden. There's no way. I'm not going anywhere. I have no more questions. About the Grey Wardens, anyhow. Fair enough. Something on your mind? Of course. What was it like to be a Grey Warden before the others? I didn't know them for very long. But I guess it was longer than you. You never met them all, did you? They were quite a group. Actually, they felt like an extended family since we were all cut off from our former lives. We also laughed more than you think. There was this one time... Well, you probably don't want to hear stories about men you didn't know. Not to hear them. There was one Grey Warden who came all the way from the Anderfels. What was his name? Gregor, Gregor. He was a burly man with the biggest, fuzziest beard you've ever seen. And the man could drink. <laughs> he drank all the time, but he never got drunk. Finally, we all made a pool to see just how many pints it would take to put him under the table. Still, had a lot of fun. Sometimes. We were kin of a sort. All of us had gone through the joining, so we knew... Anyhow, it doesn't have to be deadly serious all the time. Anyhow, we never did find out. He said he'd drink a pint for every half pint that the rest of us drank. He was still going by the time the rest of us were passed out. I'm told that Duncan walked in later on and saw us all passed out from one end of the hall to the other and Gregor still drinking. <laughs> Duncan laughed until he nearly... Until... I'm sorry, it must be hard for you. Yes, I... I suppose so. I thought I was done with this, but... It just struck me that I have nothing to remember Duncan by. Nothing at all. There's no body, not even a token of his that I could... take with me. That must sound really stupid to you. What's all? I just would have liked something of his to take with me, that's all. Well... There's no use in moaning about it, is there? He's gone. Let's just go. I'm wondering something. I'd like to know your thoughts about some of our traveling companions. Do you mind if I ask? Uh, go ahead, I don't mind. What about Sten? The way he looks at me with those eyes. Creepy. And he's so quiet for someone so big. The more I talk to him, the more reasonable he does seem. His philosophy is so strange. But it doesn't sound at all as vile as the Chantry describes it. And yet, he killed all those people. He doesn't even deny it. Doesn't that bother you? He's so good, what he did. Hmm. I'm not so sure that his regret means the same as it would for us. The Kunari sense of honor mm -hmm. is... It's a bit hard to grasp. For me, anyway. What about Liliana? Is she crazy? Or do you really believe in her vision? Yeah, I believe in religious um, visions and miracles. Even the Chantry believes that most claims of visions and such are usually people's minds playing tricks on them. Wishful thinking at best. I'm not sure what I think. I believe that she believes in her vision. That's one way to put it. I don't know what to make of her. If you look at her when she doesn't see you, she just looks so... so sad. I almost feel guilty taking her away from her life. Is that yes, I know. Still, I feel badly for her. Morrigan. Do you trust her? Think about it. Maybe Flemeth sent her with us for some other reason than she said. Yeah, I like it, do you? Well, aside from the fact that she's a complete and utter bitch, no, I don't like her at all. Why, do you? She had another connection. Great. So they were right. Well, it's your funeral. Enough. I think my curiosity is sated. 
Let's get back to it, shall we? Something on your mind? <laughs> of course. Such as they are. About the... Yeah, I think I've talked to everyone for now. Um, who's this guy, Levy Dryden? You're a hard man to find. Where are my manners? The name is Levy. Levy Dryden. Did Duncan ever mention me? Levy of the coins? Levy the trader? Darren, I know... He, I've never heard of you. Really? He never told you of old Levy? We've known each other for years. But here I am carrying on while you have a blight to stop. Don't want to waste your time. But you see, Duncan promised that together we'd look into something important for the wardens. And for me. But poor Duncan's. Well, no more. A tragedy it is, but that. But I know he would want his work carried on. His pledge fulfilled. How do you know, Duncan? It's a bit of a tale, that is. But I'm the one who brought the Grey Wardens back to Ferelden. Well, I was one of the ones. There were a lot of us. Make us breath, I'm a bit nervous. Honoured to be here, really. What promise did Duncan make to you? My family, well, passed a bit checkered, to see. Nobles look at us with disdain. My great-great-grandmother, Sophia Dryden, was the last Warden Commander of Ferelden back when the Wardens were known as Freeloaders. So King Olin banished the Wardens, and he took House Dryden's land and titles. What well, next? Hard to say. After King Olin died, there was a civil war, loads worse than this one. And our family was on the run, hunted by enemies, with nary a friend in the world. But Dryden's are tough. We rebuilt, became merchants, and we never lost our pride. I'm surprised you kept your name. Our family's only crime was guarding the kingdom against the blight. We're not ashamed of that. So what, does it, what does this favour you ask of Duncan? I ask for the truth. My family reveres Sophia Dryden. We know she died at the old Grey Warden base, Soldier's Peak. We want evidence to clear her name. It won't restore our land or our titles, but it'll restore our honour. I never heard of Soldier's Peak. Well, no one's been to Soldier's Peak since Ireland's days. At least none that's come back. I spent years mapping the maze of tunnels to the peak, and I found the way a few years back. So I went to Duncan, I did, and I said that he could reclaim the old base and my family could have its honour. Why didn't, that, um, why didn't um, Duncan help? Darkspawn surfaced in southern Ferelden, and Duncan got plenty busy recruiting new wardens and meeting with good King Caelan. Duncan said he would help after the Battle of Ostagar. Said there might be useful things at the peak, but he never had the chance. How will Caelan peak up the wardens? Soldiers peak a strategic and symbolic importance. Duncan said that it would be worth it right there. He also it's hoped to recover right. lost warden <laughs> history and perhaps a few old relics. Oh, no one knows what's what up hard there now. Boy. What do you do for me? I can pick my way through the tunnels at the base of Soldier's Peak, but the place, well, they say it's haunted, and it'll be dangerous for certain. Will you think on it at least? Yes, I only say we will warden it. A thousand you. blessings upon you, warden. I'll mark down the location on your map. When you arrive, we'll pick our way through the tunnels together. Could you There's anything I can do for the, um, please, please day, um, tell me. Quests. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected, and with your discount. So what we need first is um we're gonna pass it. Stick and protective cone.
<laughs> oh boy. You can play fetch with Monty. He's a good boy. <laughs> he's he's a, um he's injured, sucks. <laughs> look, at, look at the boost it gives him. <laughs> anyway, let's figure out where we're going to next. Yes. Yes. Indeed. We've got all these places we can go. I think there's one more party member we can go have a hunt for. What do you mean? To forgive me if I seem a bit nervous. Not many people travelling in this part of Ferelden. Of course, that's part of my problem, isn't it? Mule got spooked by a wisp and ran off into the woods. Now what do I do? You asked me to find your mule. Oh, no, no, no. I sent my elf to do that. I mean, I sent my helper, Taran. Nice fellow, that, Taran. Allow me to introduce myself. Felix de Grosbois, merchant and entrepreneur at your service. I'm Darry, I'm pleased to meet you. I don't normally take this route, but with the war, I was hoping for a bit of luck and good weather in the mountains. Sadly, I've had neither. Ugh, this trip has been one miserable disaster after another. I don't suppose you consider helping a fellow out? Help a fellow out how? Of all the other things that went wrong, the worst is this artifact I brought in Jada. It's a control rod, I'm told, for a golem. No point in me keeping it, however, as I'll never get to use it. But, uh, maybe you could? What's the control rod do? The dwarf I brought it from said it activates and controls a golem. So long as you have it in your hand, the golem does what you say. Might be useful, no? I mean, you look like the sort who could use one, yes? I don't know if this even work. The fellow I brought it from is a long-standing contact. He didn't want to come to Ferelden, however, with all our... Mm, troubles. <laughs> he said he got it from the man <laughs> oh, who owned this golem. But, to be honest, I have no idea if it will work. Hence, the low, low price. <laughs> what do you say? What's the catch? The catch? Uh, yeah, I uh, suppose it is a catch, isn't it? The catch is that the golem didn't come with the rod. It's supposed to be down in a village down south, waiting to be activated. Even if I could get down there, which I can't, I understand the place has been overrun by Darkspawn. That's not such an issue for adventurous types like yourself, surely? Or I'm hoping that's so, at least. What do you want for? Nothing. I just don't want to have to lug around something that might be taken for a gemstone by some bandit. To be honest, I don't even know if it'll be useful to you. I've paid too much to simply throw it away. It's a thing I could use it. Just as well. 
As I mentioned before, you'll find the golem down south, in a town called Honleith. I'll mark it here on your map. Just hold up the rod and say Dulaf Gar. That will wake the golem up, so I'm told. I hope it works. A personal Best function, then. Good. Now, I guess it's up to me to find that mule myself. Now, this is where the point I get, I think. Where do we go? Do we go to Holland? Or do we go... I think we're going to go... I think we're going to... Um, Either Holland or like Callanhad. Which which way do we go first? Um, Shax? <coughs> hmm. I can't decide. You know what? It's the circle sounds like it was having big trouble, especially with um, a sense of what a normal being called. We better um, go over and see if we can save the um, shite. <laughs> you said save the shite. Don't look now, but well, look now. All right, all right. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to be ending off things t here today. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, next time, we're going to go to um, the Circle of Madrai and see if we can um, see what's going on with the Circle and see if we can save the Majors. Anyway, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit the like button and subscribe. If you're watching this on Twitch, give us a follow and a subscription. But now it's also time for a raid. We're going to go raid our... Uh, Good friend, Hamjan. I see, um, I can't think she streams. Oh, I think she's still, I think she's streaming lots of stuff, but anyway. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.